gonna post on Catwalk. Happy's got him covered off, but Smith's doing so much damage. Problem is, once he goes down, Shock's not quite in position. Happy's just gonna slip out from lower now. He's gonna be a sitting duck at the barrels, or is he? Because Happy, he looks the wrong direction. It could have been an opportunity for Shock's to prevail, but Kenny there to immediately take them back in a very important match. One of these two teams is about to go 0-2. Sponge, a colleague of ours, former player for Renegades, said that pick, pick between these two teams, both of them won't make it. It was a bold prediction for him to make, but that kind of looks true if one of these teams goes 0-2 this early. So it's Smith's picking those first two frags now. And then, like I said, the aggression coming from the CT is actually giving a couple of kills away. The man advantage has gone towards Envy at this point. RPK, he's got a lot of pressure there. One player facing towards short, but the bomb is coming up long as well. And you can see his teammate scream. He's pushing B-Tunnels. RPK is isolated now. Has to wait. Can't really go for this one. Has to allow the bomb to be planted. Man planted indeed. Happy goes back toward Catwalk. Just to check it off, that's where the rotations are going to come from. Doesn't choose to con continue holding the control of it. You'd think he would have, but well planted as it is with Kenny on top of it. At the jump down, he anticipates this presence from them, so instead he gets himself in a position, but it's a headshot position in Scream. He's the last person you want to give a headshot to, and he finds it immediately. He tries to follow up, Kenny's going to double peek at the oh. second last bullet as well. Goes for the reload, that puts Apex on pressure, does find one in return, but RPK is there to trade. And they've got time without the kid, I think, just. Yeah, absolutely. Got time for that one. It's going to be Scream stepping up in the clutch situation. It was a three versus two. Diffuse coming oh, in now. It's so just close. about. Yeah, it's OK. So it comes in from Smiths. The actual beginning of the round, we did say they'd be an aggressive team on the CD side. They're looking like they're confident at this point. Smiths, really nice headshot to open things up as well. Nails a second shot. He did have time to fall back after this kill, but he wanted more, which is fine. Like, he's done a good job so far. You're feeling in the zone. I wasn't so happy with the rest of the CT. He's actually pushing the positions after. They had that man advantage. But luckily, Scream steps up and RPK to Defuse the bomb in the end. Envious, though, they get the bomb down, Matt. Normally, you're buying up here, kids, in the third round. Envious have gone for the audacious play here. The four spy in the second, we've got Tech Nines, Deagles, Scouts, some utility as well. And this could work considering the G2 buy. We've got four SMGs there and Scream with the only M4. So, this could be quite an interesting concept from Envious going forward into round number two here. Kenny already with that scout is going to try and push down mid, far forward as he can. Get stance at top middle to allow the pistols now, or at least one of them. Well, the rest get in behind Apex, up Catwalk, because they want to try and get control of short as possible approach to the most wide open site. Some yeah. get mowed down by rifles over toward B tunnels, and this gives them a chance to try and execute. MBK, though, tries with Deagle to hit shots toward the site. Instead, Apex takes the damage. Shox is going to come out worse for wear on this blind. It up doesn't realize he's still in the flames. 11 HP, can't walk to his right, because if he dies, he's gone. And Smith's is exactly that, because Apex is already there with the Tech 9. This is an awkward situation for them to be in now. They're going to give up yet another plan, so watch for more aggression in the third round to come out if they don't convert this. Good pickup from Shox and return on Kenny. Can't find the shot. Only 11 HP, and Shox is still doing excellent work in that angle. Yeah, but somehow staying alive here on 5 HP as well. It's going to be two players remaining for the terrorists. Happy to face first, known to be strong on the Deagle. Can't connect the shot, though. Body takes him down. Six are left in the three versus one. Does some damage there, but the CT's managed to hold off the four spy. Good news for Envious, they get the bomb down, so going forward, they do have an eco going to number three, but they will get a full gun run after that. Shox has disconnected again. We had an issue yesterday with G2, but this time it won't matter because the round was over. He stayed alive anyway. But we'll have to have a momentary pause to get him back into the game. He's wow. doing his uh, lovely wave that he did yesterday to get everyone's attention, just to be sure. It's always him, isn't it? it it's, it's Shox is the problem? It seems so. Wow. Well, to be fair, in that previous round, he certainly wasn't. Like, he takes that, all that um, Molotov damage on the ramp. He's flashed up. He's getting blocked by his teammate as well. Then he just does it's such a patient move. They're waiting for the distraction to come in, waiting for the time to pounce. It's Kenny S with the scout, looking down on him, waits for him to take a shot, then comes out, takes him down, hides again, waits for the distraction to come in. Just really well played from him. Very disciplined stuff there. And it will be G2 going up to zero. Like I said, bomb going down for NBA. It's not the end of the world. And here's that classic overlay from that British TV show, The Simpsons. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's not British, Henry. I think you should know that by now. Is it not? No. no I saw it when they're doing all the catchphrases, like dough and all that stuff. That does sound like something a British person would yeah. say. You're right. Yeah. I've definitely heard James and Dan say that. Don't know about you. <laughs> Well, then it looks like we're just kind of working out what the problem is here. And they are back on the server now, so it's just kind of working out what the money's all reset. The e-bot's kind of back up to date, you know. It should be fine. 2-0, though, some close rounds, but uh, this will be a full eco for Envious. We can see if they're going to buy anything at all in this round. I'd assume maybe a couple of P250s. Most teams opt to go towards short in these sort of redundant rounds. Try and get the bomb down and run boost, maybe. One smoke with the catwalk. There's a bit of history for you, Matt. Why don't you take us through it? Yeah, well... This is history. I don't need to. It's very clear graphics. They're so good here, isn't it? Like, I don't have to say anything. Founded November 2013. Now, remember, that's the G2 organization because Titan was the former home of this roster. G2's gone through a number of different teams, starting as far back as some of the CIS region teams. Then Team Property became G2. And then it went on to the team that's now FaZe, et cetera. There's a number of them in there. 
Right. And there you go, there's... I'll look back at the results. Now, the one thing I want to mention, Season 2 from E-League, 9th, 12th, that's a huge fall-off, considering not long before that, they were one of the teams to win a Premier-level event this sure. year. They've slipped a long way down the ladder. We mentioned it yesterday. Aside from Fnatic, of the 10 teams that have won a top tournament in this year, and Fnatic says the, the furthest back, so they've had the most time to decline, and roster changes also. They're the ones the furthest down in terms of the rankings right now. In this game, yesterday we said there was five former major champions between the, them and Godsent. Today there's six. The French Shuffle, obviously, all of those wins came from the Envious or LDLC side. Let's be honest, though. If both these teams didn't qualify for this event, I would say another French Shuffle is probably going to be incoming. I think there's, it's imminent anyway, yeah. but we'll see. I mean, th that's the one thing. If one team does and one team doesn't, contract obligations, I think they expire sometime in January, but you have to ride out the major. Yeah. If one of them makes it, if they both don't, that, that, that could happen over the new the year. Possibility, though. Let's be real right now. Anyway, let's get into this. MBS have invested a little bit of money into this one. MBK has got the Deagle and Body Armor, some Tech 9s and PD-50s around, and some Flashbangs. They can actually be very powerful on Dust2. If you time them correctly towards the A site, Beta has shot from the Orb of Shocks, interesting enough. Not going to be in the hands of uh, Smiths at the moment. Up to go towards Shore, like I said. Flash is over, maybe a run boost. You're going to try and plan for Shore. It's the, the easiest way to get a bomb down there. It's reliant on the CTs hitting all of their shots. If you flash them effectively, it can be a real possibility. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Smiths has to fall back here and allow them to plan at this stage. Apex in towards site just clears off to make sure there's no one at the box on ramps to pop up. Very fast plant. Three for three in plants now for Envious. Yeah. Even without weapons, they're continuing to force off of it's that. It's still possible to win this round. 100%. They've got catwalk covered off. That's where it's planted for. No one going to approach that position yet from the CT side. Interestingly enough, they're posting shocks very far back over toward B with that AWP for anyone who crosses. No one need to, but no one need get that far either. Body, RPK and Smith's all finding headshots. Body's going to push a little bit further forward, finds the one at and off position, and that's going to be it. Maybe All five stay alive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, right, that's a good move from Smiths. He's there by himself. They've actually stacked towards middle and B at that point. Smiths is there on the A side, like he normally is by himself. Like I said, Shock's got the orb, not him. He's got that UMP. He might as well stay alive. Instead of challenging, going down, making it a five and four, and a much more difficult retake, allow them to have the bomb. That's fine. Your money's good anyway. And come back and keep five players alive. So we go into the first gun round here. Kenny S, of course. He brings out the AWP. This is going to be a really exciting battle. Normally, it is Shock's when it goes up against Kenny S. We know kind of Smiths is synonymous with Dust2. Normally he's like it's known as his best map, but Shoxy, if he's in the zone, he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kenny S in the Orb Jewels, and that's what I'm looking for here. And we'll see whether he decides to go aggressive here. Kenny S looking for the... Uh, jumping across here, going to be smoked out. Interesting, they're not using the HE at the start. She's going all in with the smoke. We've got MBK looking for some long attention, but there's three CTs waiting for them. That's actually quite common these days. You send three to stop the rush at the start, and then you'll probably leave someone like RPK in the pit by himself. Okay, I'll post up at top middle to make sure no one's going to push forward. They don't quite have eyes on Catwalk, given, considering Apex. Yeah, he's gone through lower, but he's close to the double door position instead. Now they'll start to approach. One of the things we often see G2 do, and it's an interesting switch up with Scream and Shocks, is have Shocks push through into the B tunnels. With Scream over there right now, it's a little more passive thus far. But there's not a lot of presence there from the Envious. If they start to continue to push on the catwalk this often, I, I wouldn't be surprised if G2 adapts and starts doing that. You can start putting the orb towards Shaw, looking for that first pick, boosting up, for example, or playing the orb towards mid doors as well. But RPK, he's thinking about going aggressive. You can see Sixter has got his number for now. It's going to come down to the timings, and I'm not sure RPK will push. You can see he's got Shoxy on the orb watching that. He's waiting for him to bait out the shot, and then he'll peek at that same time. Flash comes in. This will be RPK pushing. A lovely play coming in from G2. They've got the man advantage now, and they're funneling them towards Shaw. Fast in toward the site. Smiths is still on it. They'll box up. Well timed. MP gets the first shot. Looks for another. Does take that back. Shocks found it over his shoulder. That's the second. That one's more important. It's bombed down, and Shocks will burn happy to a crisp. That's absolutely textbook CS coming in there from G2. They're running the clock down. They're getting bits of information. RPK in those long doors, hearing for footsteps. You can hear. Sixer moving away at that point, he gets flashed over, gets the kill, and they're actually funneling him, like I said, towards A at that point. They're pushing up towards short, they fall back. Smiths is on the side as well. Shox is backing him up, there's flashes coming in, they're timing it very nicely. There's a very well executed round on the CD side of G2. We did say it's their absolute best map. They can be very scary on it, or they can be quite flat as well. It's a little bit of a mixed bag in that respect, but it looks like they're showing up today. 4 0 in favor of G2, and now Envious with the. Fourth stage loss bonus do go to the Pistols, Deagles, and PD50s, but RPK opens things up. And interestingly enough, we talk about Envious. They're the ones with, the, I guess you could say, pedigree behind them, given two major wins throughout the course of the organization, two different organizations they played for, but this roster, yeah. in a sense, in essence. You go into this map, you've got Kenny S in the op. You'd favor him over Smiths. We talk about Smiths being good on this map in general, but they get shocks and scream. I actually agree with the panel. I favor G2 on Dust2 slightly over Envious, even with all the potential they have. 
Yeah, well, it's looking to be that way so far. We have got a deal kill coming in for six of that. Takes down Scream towards the mid door. Still going to be a four and four, though. And Shock still has the AWP. Looks like they'll be going towards Short once again. Probably going to go for more of the same, trying to get that short plan down with Smiths. A little bit more aggro this time, looking for the first kill. Doesn't nail the headshot there, but gets an apex down with the body spray. Super shot from Sharks again, follows it up, two down. And Sharks punching on an AWP. That looks promising because that's the battle I would say Envy has the advantage on with Kenny S. Well, whereas we're going to get a pause. If you look at rifles, I favor Sharks and Scream over Happy. And obviously Apex. I think Apex and Happy are more mind players, and Chonks and Scream with AIM are more riflers. They're more lethal. Do you remember when we casted that cobble game between MVS and G2, and it was yep. Shoxy, like working on T-side with the AWP going towards drop down and stuff? Yeah, it seems sick. he actually has the upper hand. I'd say against Kenny S, them head-to-head. -head. I would say overall Kenny's a better AWPer, pound for pound, but in this particular matchup, Kenny always seems to go a little bit quiet. Like, Shoxy always seems to have his number. Obviously, when he's regional derbies, you know exactly how someone plays and their tendencies and where they like to go. And Shox seems to be very aware of that and he's happy to go toe to toe and seems to be winning the majority of the duels at the moment. So there it is. 5-0, we have a tactical timeout for Envious, of course. 5-0 down, you want to work out what's going forward. You're getting the bomb down, you're getting maximum loss bonus, but still early days, but a great start for G2 here. Yeah, those three bomb plants we had at the start over toward cat safe approaches. So planting on the inside, the default spot for catwalk after taking it. Those have gone away now that guns have actually come out more regularly, which is a bit of a problem for them. This round, they will put a little bit more of a default presence in toward the B tunnels, and that's smart because they are getting three over in that direction, which indicates to me, Shock's down the AWP, indicates to me they might want to push through. And this is where I, what I like with Shock's. He's played three different, four different positions now yeah. in this map, and we've had six rounds. Being on Dust 2, it's dynamic is the operative word if you want to be successful in this map. It's what the French teams normally do very well, moving that AWP around and actually choosing where you want to go, where you feel confident you can make the picks. He was in the long previous round, showed some presence there, found some kills from the car position. He's trying to suggest, yes, I'm here. You need to go towards B if you actually don't want to contest with me. So it's quite nice he's going towards B this time. Problem is, it's more the same from Envious. They're going to be maybe actually just showing their, their presence towards short and maybe baiting out. We're doing the same thing. They go for a mid-split here. That could be quite interesting. Screen gets some information in upper B. Happy takes him down there. Nice play. And you knew it was inevitable they were going to push that at some point in time. It's this round instead. Shocks gets toward window. With the push on B, they try and capitalize, take space that would be available inside of mid. Body followed his teammate in as well. Couldn't get the shot, but Shocks is smartly posted and levels it at fours. The problem is they vacated the A site to do all of this to compensate for the rotations and try and push with RPK at long to get information. They give up Cat and they give up a plant. Happy as well is going to do happy things. He's almost timed this right. Yeah. It's, a, it's a definitely a risky flank coming in here, but it's actually going to work out very nicely considering it's a nice early plant. They've got numbers on the A site. He's just watching CD spawn. That risk has been eradicated now. No one can really get to the bomb site through that. It's going to be Shoxy, and we'll go down first by the looks of things. Should be a guaranteed round for him. There it is. Shock's down. Body was found by Sixer. That was the only other threat that potentially could have caught Happy off lurking. And MBK will close it. So very well done that time from Envious. It all starts with the early pick. A little bit of aggression on B, and I don't necessarily disagree with it. You have to do it eventually but they can't compensate for it, and they get caught with the three men on B early on. That doesn't help out A. The reason they have to do that as well is because they've actually made a bit of a gamble. They've sent three players towards the B side, including the AWP. They've lost map presence towards middle, long. They actually need to say, okay, we don't really know what's going on at this point. It feels like going to be another A attack. It's got presence towards short. We're going to push the B tunnels. Let's get some information at least. But G2 found the MBS players in towards the upper tunnels. That was obviously happy. He finds that perfect because then he thinks, okay, B side's open for me now. My players can actually execute towards the A site. I'll push him towards CD spawn, and it's almost a dream round for him in that respect, but round number seven comes in. Obviously, G2 have a money in abundance here, so Orb comes out, and it's going to be in the hands of Smiths this time. So it was a bit of a, a temporary decision to bring Shoxy into that role, but like we said, Smiths, this is known to be his best map. So we'll see whether he can continue that form as we go to round number seven. Yeah, and I think Shox, like we talked about, brings more dynamic play style and a faster approach to the game. But as mentioned, he's very capable on the rifle as well. And Smiths is more of an anchor. So this is kind of changing the pace in some ways. Moved around, but I say Shox is a force on the rifle. Flashes over, it misses one of the two players he tries to peek, and he goes so wide, he gets caught out for it. So two rounds in a row that Envy's had the opening pick. Yeah, there's another change of setup here for G2. Shoxy by himself towards short. That's an interesting one. Here's the classic NOA boost towards middle. We'll see whether this finds anything for them. Scream's going to wait as well to see if anyone pushes up. Happy's already back on the catwalk as well. Bomb's going to wait outside of long. 
because they're trying to get long presence. We haven't seen them actually really attain that all too often. It's been catwalk well, instead. Exactly. It's one of those valuable parts of the map. If you can take this on nice and early, that's great. At this stage of the game, you're kind of committed. You've got 30 seconds from now. I guess the good news is happy. He can't actually get any games going for them there. And Scream's going to find kills towards long. And it's a last ditch attempt at this point. Going to be crossing to the side. The Smiths waiting for them. Has to hit one shot. Guaranteed the round. We can't nail it just yet. Nearly hit two shots, to be fair, as they lined up. The Flames are going to reach him in the corner. That gives Sixer a chance to catch off RPK. So advantage was on to Envy, then it goes back to G2, and now it's back in Envy's hands with Bomb down as well. This becomes a massive problem. Both have kits. Stream's gonna get limited off at Elevator, and Body's found inside of the smoke. They know he's there. He's already shot. Easy to triangulate him from that position, and Apex will do exactly that. Well, nice work from Envious. Like I said, you're a bit all in at that point. You've got the basic long control, 30 seconds remaining. He can't really waste any time. Smoke the crossover, hope for the best, and happy. He doesn't find any kills, sure, but he actually takes the attention away long enough just as his teammates are pushing up. You can see that on the replay just there. As Apex kills body, he's actually concentrating towards short, and then his teammates can't really do too much about it. Screaming CT spawn taken down at that point, and it's going to be 5-2. I think the money's in the position now. They finally broken G2. So just some deagles here in a P250. G2 are happy to take at this point. They could have forced it, but they want to make sure they go in with these gun rounds to get themselves in economic hell. So, Kenny is still on the AWP, of course. And no particular stack coming in from G2 as of yet, but Apex does find the first kill towards the B-Tunnels. This is a perfect anti-eco scenario. You get a nice, nice early pick. Sit back at the point. Don't need to overcommit, Apex. Be careful. And as he does take some considerable damage there from the Deagle, but you just want to wait for the CT reactions. That's the aim of the game on Dust2, especially on the CT side. If you lose a player, you need to be hunting for information, trying to get a kill on, in return on the other side of the map. So at this point, Kenny S, just hold up. As you can see, there's a reaction coming in, but MVK deals with it quite nicely. Yes, indeed. Kenny nearly hits a shot at mid. Does switch over to the Tech 9, catches off Smith's turn. Capitalize. They're just doing what damage ah. they can to try and eke out a little bit of economic exchange. But with five players staying up right now, very good. Well, okay, I take that back. Happy's gone. But four players now staying up. Very good situation for them to be in because two players already have a buy in hand. Kenny S will as well with whatever bonus they achieve in this, even if they were to lose the round. The only ones that need money are Happy and MBK. So they can drop over potentially. You get what I'm saying. Yeah, I get it somehow. Somehow. Do I not make sense to you, Happy? <laughs> to be fair, I don't make sense to anyone. Well. Four Not even myself. Four and one scream at this point. The money's like in a, a reasonable position for G2 overall. I think it sits at around the 3K mark on average. They're going to get $2,400 in next round. So plenty of money going forward, especially if the scream does save this AK. That'd be fantastic, especially with a player like him. We talk about the one taps and the headshots. Get down the CT side means you can hold much more aggressive angles, go for the taps instead of having the disadvantage with the M4. We'll see whether he can save the weapon. He will be hunted down. Two players coming towards outside B. They dare go any further, so they will. Screen takes on six up, looking for the double as well, but Apex, what oh, a brave move from him, because he had 19 HP, does take the challenge, but Screen it will drop, and then it's going to be 5-3 now. MVS striking back after going 5-0 down. The money back in G2's favor, though. Double Orb setup could come in. We've seen G2 run it a few times. It's going to be Shoxy buying an M4, so maybe not necessarily this round. As we go into number nine here. And picking up the Orb as yes, surely Smith's will. There it is. Yeah. Not surprisingly oh. at all. Now, what spawn does yeah. he so have? Yeah, so look at Kenny S's spawn, though. So just to, if you're not aware, very base, spawn-based map. If you can actually get those long spawns, especially as an orbit, you're going to take them every single time. And, oh. okay, G2, don't dare run across there. And that works out nicely. You get a Molotov at the entrance first. So actually mean they can get across to the pit without the getting taken down. The thing, the reason I asked by Smith is because he needs to counter that position. The problem is, and the, with Kenny having that spawn, getting there that quickly, I, I'd almost call for no flash. Sixer flashes it. RPK was about to peek, and Kenny was already posted. As soon as the flash hits, he backs around the corner, and Kenny's that's, lineup's that's, gone. That's actually a good point. Normally, if you do have that six one, you always want the space. You don't want to scare them off. You don't want to even let them know you're coming. You want them to think, okay, it's not a long rush. I can probably justify going to the pit. I absolutely agree with you there. Like you normally just want to just leave it dry, and it's hope they can come around and play like Kenny S. That that's absolutely true. I can see some aggression coming up the CTC. They love to push the beat up. And you can see like, these teams know exactly what they're going to do. I even know Screen pushes that position a lot. Happy certainly. Aware. And now the B split comes in. They're going to strike straight away. One player remaining his body towards the B side. Can he hold them off? Good positioning. Gets in behind the boxes again. It's going to force Kenny to commit to the site. He knows he's in there with him. He's going to find the angle. Problem is, he's up against just the pistol for Kenny because he can't go to the AWP. And he's so low on HP. Kenny plays it smarter. You're dead right because he doesn't need to overcommit to it. 15 HP. Just hold him in place. Keep his attention. And in comes his teammates. Cavalry's arrived. Bomb will go down. Well, there it is. That's actually made G2 play a lot more cagey at this point. That B pushes aren't working out, so they have got their number in that respect. 
Three on two now. The retake, one of the most difficult sites in the game to retake, especially if you don't have the grenades and an aid OVP in hand. Smiths has to wait for that smoke to dissipate. He's got RPK right next to him as well. What's the call here? Maybe go for a couple of flashes, see if Smiths gets a quick pick. I don't think this is possible at this stage. Probably just want to be falling back right about now. I don't think they have a chance here. Hmm, sticking around. Let's try and get no kit on Smiths. I think just the thing he could do. Okay, so he's gonna do damage on one. Take down Kenny. He's forcing them. Oh, RPK's got a kit. This night. Oh, I think he missed it. Just missed it because he clipped the edge of the box. Oh, that's so close. If he, I, I don't think he had it either way. He clipped the edge of the box and right. couldn't reach it, but I don't think he had it either way. I don't want to over-dramatize that because I think it was done no matter what. It was a really cool idea, to be fair. Like I said, I thought it was very, very unlikely to win that round. They at least gave it a good shot, take down three players, and managing to come within seconds there. He did clip the bomb side there. Maybe we can get someone um, with in more production to work us. it out, just to slow it down and see what time he had left. That would be kind of interesting to see. Would have you made it with that slide out? It was probably like, what, like a quarter second delay, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, I think so. I think there was still enough on it. The thing that I was going to suggest he could do, now the problem is he has the AWP. He does get away with it. I was going to say he could hold them on the bomb site, force everyone to go down, which they ended up doing anyway. Yeah. So well, at least it forces reinvestment. So Smiths, he went down with the bomb, right? But he's got him with the AWP. He had more money than everyone else. He's gone down to 2,300 himself. So he's like balancing the books, right? Yep. I'm not sure that's the best bet here. He, you know, he's got a maximum loss bonus a game, regardless next round. So he still can buy the orb. That's fine. But let's see what he can do with the AWP. He's going to have body armor. It's going to be a big play from him to actually make anything happen for him as he holds the A sites. And you can see MVS now just feeling out the map. They've got a huge advantage in terms of the economy at this point. Four rounds in a row for them. Apex. Likes to be flash through middle. More than happy to walk through these doors and hunt for information. Watch the push out at long. It may only be a pistol, but Shox is timing. Could be spot on. He's going to hear Sixer leaving that corner. He's going to know they're inside of middle. Smith's going to hit some shots here, hold them off. Hits it perfectly as well, drops down. He just needs Shox to get in position. The problem is Happy is always lurking out from bottom. It could catch him off, Shox. He's just gotten in that position now. Happy's going to be looking for it. Meanwhile, on the site, it's Kenny to prevail against Smith from the AWP. And as mentioned, Shox was found. So he tried. He tried to do what he could considering his position. What they shot from body, but that's going to be the end of the round. 5 5. They pull it back. Five straight rounds. After answering on the bonus, like you said, that now favors G2 because even though Smith's bought, they're in a position to buy whatever they'd like this yeah. time. So that's why the AWP investment is not a huge on the previous round. I just like it. Like, if you are an AWP, you want to have as much money as possible going forward. Yes, he can buy the AWP now, but he have no nades. He will have head armor at least, but he doesn't really need it as the AWP. And here we go. The double AWP setup comes in. This is what I want to see from G2. Normally, when things start going wrong like this, you lose five rounds in a row. You need an adjustment. Shoxy was actually finding the kills of the AWP. It's not going to be him this time. It's going to be body. He plays the B site. He'll be setting up like a turret, wanting to actually shut down anyone who's working with the pick, like Happy for example. They're expecting the push. Screams are showing a lot of that presence now. They're mixing it up. This is a good reaction. Let's see if it works out for Body and if he can find a first pick here. I'd be interested to see if he goes any further than this. Just seeing if anyone will dare. Picks will face the upper platform now. Body's in the position. Two on round three. I think round four, excuse me. Strange setup. In the, that's like one of the scariest angles to face as a CT. Pushing those mid doors and actually trying to look for death. Possibly have a rifle as well. Gets punished for it. And now Body has to be out like this. Exactly. Yeah. They've lost the pick once again. It's double orb. They can't afford a retake. He needs to find a kill. And it's worked out horribly wrong now. And Smiths go down round over. Save your weapons, boys. You can't do anything about this. Now, admittedly, I didn't know it in the last round. But since they've started winning, it was actually round six that Shox was over there. Since they've started winning rounds, it's because they're getting the opening pick every single time. Round six, round seven, round eight, round nine. You've got this double orb set up. Allow them to come into your crosses, right? Smiths is a challenge. Sorry, um, Shox is challenging towards mid by himself. We said it's a really unfavorable situation for the CTs there. You could potentially have the CTs, uh, the terrorists, by the Xbox and towards short, flashing you over, smoking you out. Like there's so many situations that can actually work against you. You've got this double orb set up. Allow it to work. Play a crossfire in the middle with the rifles. Have an orb on either side. Then you have a player moving around as well, a little bit more mobile, backing players up. But Shoxy maybe get a bit frustrated there. And uh, as soon as he goes down, we, we saw it. Body has to push B tunnels. They've lost middle. A B split is a massive possibility at that point. He needs to push in with the AWP. He's got four different angles to face at that point as well. Player was very close to the fill up. And once again, G2 walk into the crosshairs of MVS. And it has to be an eco at this point. Six yeah. rounds in a row. So the issue with the maximum loss bonus is if you're T side right now, let's say you're shocked, you have $3,400. You're going to get $3,400 again next round. They're maxed it out. And you get a bomb plant, you get the additional 800 on top of that. CT side, there is no injection. There's no bonus. There's nothing additional you can do potentially other than kill rewards. Yeah. So if they fully invest here and they don't get kill rewards, they lose the round. They're only going to have 3400 again. They're in the same position. So you're right. CT sides are forced to eco no matter what. You can't gamble to try and go for a bomb plant. 
Sixer starts it off again. Early pick, at least this time with Pistols, RPK. He'll get one in return. He's actually got himself inside the long cave. They know he's there, but he has actually... Okay, so he's going to back away, and I'm not surprised for trade potential. Because he's got a rifle. Doesn't want to give that up, but... In that position, there's a massive shadow advantage. It's one of the places, I think, overpass at backstairs. I would say that's the most powerful fort in the whole game, but again, they knew he was there, which creates more of a complication. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Well, they have got the AK. RPK, though, has been spotted, and he's got the aforementioned weapon. Let's see if he can step up with it. Does get a headshot on Apex. He can actually start lighting them up now. Find his second kill and the what? third. Four kills in total for RPK. It's just down to happy now. Three on one, RPK. Find something to work with here for G2. That's insane. The one rifle, and he makes it work. He gets back, plays it smart, plays it long. He's gone down now, though. He's been found out. It's two kills for Happy in return. But they've got the AWP on shocks. So even though there's still a chance for Happy, he's got to contest this. And shocks has got himself in behind the barrel. It's not a common spot to look, and he's going to win it out. Brilliantly done from RPK. Wow. First time Envy's had the opening pick and not converted the round. Wow, RPK, that was an eco. He gets that gun towards the long doors, and this was such a great play from him. I'm not sure how MBK didn't get the frag there. Almost an open opportunity. He had a chance to get five or six bullets off before RPK even decided to look at him, and he just lights him up with that AK there. Pixel precision as he starts tapping with that AK towards short. And this 6-6. Six, six, finally, G2 find a round after losing six in a row. Maybe that will bring them back to life here. Shoxy back on the AWP. That's probably a good call at this point, Matt. It's him and is actually getting all the majority of the picks in the rounds they're winning. Smiths has been relatively quiet with the AWP. Let's see if it works out for them. Body towards B now. Apex a bit more aggressive this time. They keep mixing things up, and he's looking at that first pick. Decides to opt out, though. He's given his position away, so doesn't want to overcommit. Round 13. They said this would be a close game, and Envy has certainly put on a show after going 5-0 down. Apex gets inside the smoke, tries to beat Scream to getting his weapon redrawn, but fails to do so. So G2, first time they've had the opener in a while, and I only keep track of that just because of how even these two teams are in this map. It's all about tactical advantage. Kenny's going to pull it back, so four versus four. Headshot onto Shocks. Happy's going to give up on B and start working toward Cap potentially. Yep, Shocks goes down there to the hands of Kenny S. After round number five, it seems like he has the lion's share of all the kills here. At this point, they still have well, only two smokes and some flashbangs here. A full execution is not possible, but it doesn't seem like the plan at this point. I'm assuming it's going to be Happy going towards the A site. That probably makes sense, but he's actually going to be in towards B tunnels with these guys. Normally him on the lurk in these sort of situations, but they'll be walking in, and they know Body's going to be at low HP at this point. Apex did some damage to start the round. Let's find his next kill. Body doing some damage here, managing to take down six. So. Has to hit shots efficiently, but Kenny's able to get in time before the flash comes out. Returns the shot with the Tech-9. Has the AWP as well. Smoke's going to go out in front of the doorway. Smith wraps in. Does catch off Happy before they can get both position. Oh, nearly Ooh. tagged up through the other. Found the opener on Kenny. And NBK gets there without even need of a bomb plant. Very, very close stuff there. Smith's almost the savior as he comes in through the B-tunnels. They all line up for him, but NBK gets the final killing blow in there. And it's going to be round number 14. It looks like another e for G2 after winning one round. It yeah. is a pretty harsh reset at this point. Perfect timing there. Happy comes down to the night. Once he gets started, look how close it was as well. NBK just about pulls it off. As we go into round number 14, like I said, Eco coming for G2. Been a pretty rough ride for them since the gun rounds really began. Envious taking control here. It's Apex actually top fragging for, I'd rather say the French side. It doesn't really work in this case. Doesn't. For the boys in blue, he gets 13 frags. Well, they've got time at half to take, should they elect to use so. And I think Body's just actually going to use that to reconnect. So. He'll be back in momentarily. It gives us a bit to talk about. Just to go back, I think Kenny did, uh, sorry, uh, someone did tweet to confirm. I wasn't sure, because on that close to fuse with RPK, yeah. Smith actually did save the op. He was already running, because RPK called that it was going to be close. So right, he didn't okay. buy back out. So he did carry that That's over. That's fine then. So. I assume it was so close, he must have uh, gone down with the bomb, but he actually saved it over. Well, that's fine. So the only two rounds lost, and, and again, I, I, I know I'm drawing on this stat a lot, because it matters on Dust2 with positional control, and that it's not so much an execution-based map, rather than... I mean, there is executions to be had, don't get me wrong. Once you establish position, that usually comes after a pick, hence why I bring this up. Only two rounds that were opening pick and then lost was round 11, Envy, they lost to an eco. That was RPK's brilliance, to be fair. And then round 12, G2 on a reset. If they had converted that, we might have had a much different conclusion to where we are now. So 14, 15, body's going to reconnect right now. And then, we, like I said, they've got time at half to redress things as well, up to four minutes. So... The thing is, stat. Envious like, are almost letting G2 play themselves at this point. They know exactly their, their tendencies and what kind of pushes they like to do. We've casted these guys so many times at Dust2. G2 with Scream, they love to push the B-tunnels 
most of the time, right? And Happy is more than happy to sit there, show a little bit of uh, control towards the A side, and he knows Scream's going to walk into his crosshair there. And it seems like Shock is well getting a bit frustrated, facing angles he shouldn't necessarily be doing. He's going more aggressive than he should by himself as well. The refrag potential is not really there, and he's facing those mid doors. And now we're getting himself in a situation with 7 6 and another eco for G2. Envious almost certainly going to be winning the half at this point, and through the door, I'm assuming. Yep. I guess it wasn't a wall bang, could have been a clean hit. I'm sure we'll get a replay and work out exactly what happened. That's definitely a clean hit. That's 100% just tapping, right place, right time. One in a million, but it works. That's so sweet. Yeah. They'll love that advantage to work with. That's going to force the rotation back over to A. And like you're saying as well, we, we know Scream pushes those tunnels. Cloud9 certainly knows it from way back when these guys played in the qualifier. That would have been for MLG, I suppose, as Sixer's going to take down RPK. All envious on the way through. Pistol's not going to be able to do anything at all. Shock's left in the open. It's going to go down immediately. We've known it for all year. So obviously the French counterpart is well aware of it. And I think Happy's playing it really well. That's such a lovely shot. Taps through and finds it. But that, because of this, Happy's actually not always going on to B. He's putting his support on the catwalk early on in the rounds. They're getting the position, and then he just waits, knowing that very likely someone's going to rotate that position. Here we go. Round number 15, Matt. Here it is. The auto sniper. Double orbs. Let's see if they can get a kill for the doors here. This is always quite an exciting moment. The damage starts to come through. Delays on crossing the B at least, but MBK, well, maybe overthinking it, trying to actually aim at them. Doesn't actually really land. The interesting thing is, though, Kenny was so far over to B, he can actually beat them inside of the site. And Happy's gone toward A, so they go for the one auto sniper, but there's still two ops in this. And Kenny's angle right now, I'm not sure if we can snap onto it or not. I think Kenny's got a pixel gap. No one can get, yeah, he's already inside the zone. No one can get to the back site. Now that shot missed might allow it, so he can still hold off body which means it's harder to defend this choke point, and there's more opportunities for them on this side of the map. Well then, double orb setup. Can be very viable on this terror side, especially when there's no orb available, but Shoxy is actually starting to post some numbers now. Takes down Apex. I think in return at that point, he just got down to 39 HP. Five and four for quite a while, we've seen for G2. They have got one kit here, but they're running very low on grenades. Three flashbangs remaining. That's about it. Two players still towards Peters. Look, that's where Envious will be ending up here. Hoping that Kenny S can find his next pick. He has got a player right in front of him on the right-hand side of Tunnels out. I'm assuming he's on the boxes. Yeah, there box. he is. Smart smoke to move to Kenny as well, because then they got some movement freed up. He's going to go. Oh, oh, Kenny, lovely shot in return. NBK follows it up. You would have thought Scream would have traded that. Any day of the week, I would have expected it, but I don't think he even expected his teammates to go down. Shock's now limited outside of the site. That is so, so huge for them. So the ball plant, happy waiting in mid as always, is going to find RPK and Envy pull back around where they lost the man. It's G2, nine for Envy that fall flat after going up five, nothing. Kenny's quite uh, enthusiastic about that. Yeah, I want to see that from his POV. What the hell? How did he manage to pull that one off? Body's got a sick position here. Here we go. I'm this assuming- has to be a Kenny no scope. No, a quick scope. No, nope, oh. just straight up no scope through the wall as well. No problem. That's so okay. Look at that teamwork as well. That is so confident in his ability to get that kill. MBK has got the site locked down. Happy's watching lower B. That's just beautiful stuff there. Kenny getting lively now. After the first five rounds, very quiet for him. As soon as he picked up the orb, that's when he started to step up. Great, great work in that final round. Smith's with 94 ADR as well, which is a very good stat on Dust with two. Didn't go for the op the entire time. We saw Shock starting off with it. And Apex, we didn't really touch on him too much. I did mention that it's a battle of the minds with both he and Happy when they're going for the entry kills. Sixer tends to be the brawler in this, but Apex ends the way with 14. Smith's on 15. They're yeah. well above the rest of their teammates. Yeah, Smith's is actually 15. Next closest player with nine frags there. So he's having a good game so far. Considering they lost so many rounds in a row, though, maybe not good enough. We'll go into the second and half now. To be fair, on round... I think six or seven, Shox was already at five kills. He's at eight total at the end of the half. Yeah, he had a great start, those first five rounds. I mean, they were five zero up. He was doing the majority of the legwork, but he suddenly dropped off as soon as Kenny started arriving, it seemed, and they were kind of mixing the rolls up. They tried the Smith's orb, the Shox orb, the double orb, moving the positions every single time. I think they were maybe just overthinking the situation. Instead of having traditional setups at that point, they're trying to outsmart them, throw Spanner in the works with different setups they may not necessarily presented before and wasn't really working out for them. There it is, MVS do lead the half, and 9-6 is going to be the second half now, and we'll go into the buy for G2. Five sets of armor for them. Like I said, most teams do favor towards armor. Look at this warning. See on the minimap, they've got a nice spawn for B. They could just opt to take that. Four players will head towards that position. And Shocks will spot to make sure he notifies them of exactly how many people are heading in their direction. It's going to be two. B -rush MBK, boys. yep, inside of the site. It's going to get overwhelmed. Sixer doesn't go that direction, so MBK alone, but finds one. Has a chance to peek this. Controls angle as well. They aren't quite in a position just... Triangulate and get behind, but he does manage to go down to the hands of Smiths. 
And when I say manage, it's not something he would have liked to have managed because now it gives him the bomb site. Shock's already waiting for rotations as well. Good position to do it. Straight down, potential for headshots. Finds the first, backs away because he's taken a bit of damage in Apex. That's happy with him. Spots two though, and Scream's actually gone aggressive on that. Rather than sit inside the site and rely on the information alone, he's gonna take the fight that <laughs> does exactly that. Lovely work there by Scream, and the B-Rush works out, like I was stating before. Dust 2, it can be one of the, the maps where you throw caution to the wind. You take your spawns and you just think, well, okay, we've got four players head on this side of the map. We can have Shocks give me his information. If, unless he says there's three cross to be very quickly, that's when you'll probably back out. If it's just two and you feel like you can get there before them, as long as you're trading the frag like they did, that's a very viable way to win the round there. They get the initial trade of MBK. Bomb goes down. They're holding the flanks as well. Works out very nicely for them. It's round number 17 here. A forced buy from MBS. Quite an interesting one as well. Double scouts. Very deadly weapons on Dust 2. Surely go for that mid phase. It will be MBK. Take some damage and then some as he goes down the down the smith he finds two a headshot onto apex both scouts out of the game in towards b they go that's going to be an open bomb set at this point he's already peaked once it's taking down your teammate you stay in the exact same position you had it pre-aim before he even strafe back out lovely work shocks will capitalize on kenny as well this is working out so well early on not much the pistols can do no. But think about how much damage the scout did let's say for example g2 lost the pistol and this was a force buy in the second Goes to show you why on Dust 2 it's justified to buy that scout when you can. Yeah, well, even through the door, it takes you down to about 50, 60 HP if you get tagged through it, and then one more shot from the scout will do it at that point. But here we go then. Shots just being a little bit ruthless with this MAC 10. Very good round for Smiths, especially there. He seems to be getting uh, warmed up here. He finds his 18th frag, and here's the replay. Hits the little wall bang that kicked things off, takes an MBK. This was the one that impressed me as well. Apex, to be fair to him, like you don't expect two scouts to be bought yeah. in the second round. You normally just have one, right? So like that's what Apex is going for. He's taking my teammate down. He's probably gonna reface, but still Smith's too fast for him. And we're going to round number 18. Should be a full eco at this point. MBS, the options are maybe made the door, stack towards B, or just go for a normal setup with the silence. USP MBK gets tagged again. Down to four HP this time. That's the problem. We got no armor whatsoever. Yeah, that's Pretty shocking. Remember there was the meme for a while when Guardian tagged body every time he crossed? I don't think he got hit. That was a rough ride for all of us. Yeah, every I don't single think he got round. Hit once this game. So props to him for making it over there. Shocks will take down Apex. That starts well if you remember. MBK on the B site's tagged up quite considerably. So Kenny getting Scream actually helps them out because it turns their attention back towards CT spawn ever so slightly, but the two players inside the site itself gone. Not be limited behind the smoke, trying to do what he can on top of the box. It's sure to go down and we will find ourselves 9-9. So this game's got legs now because it's certainly coming alive when the economy is about to start rolling. They actually run right by him, but Smiths is there to take him down immediately after he's blinded on that first opportunity. It's all tied up. The problem is, for MBS, they did force into that second round, so it's going to be a limited buy. Kenny S didn't force himself, so he does have the AWP, but it's glass cannon. In terms of defuse kits, they're going to be limited. Six is coming with the UMP as well, so it's certainly not a best buy, and I, that's why I always find it a bit scary in the CT side, forcing that second round. Yes, you can make it very close, but if you do lose it, it's potentially going to be going down 5-0 at that point, and this is actually a real, real possibility for MBS right now. As we go into this one, Scout staying in the hands of Smiths, and he does hit MBK once again. It's becoming a bit of a nightmare for him as he goes under 67. Not too brutal this time, as he has got the armor. So Xbox Smokes comes in from Smiths, and it looks like this is a classic AT coming in. Shocky though, some damage is being done. Might decide to push through, but it was going towards Shaw. Get some fast control here. Another lucrative part of the map, of course. You get this nice and early. Take the vision away from the CTs. Just clear out. There's no one actually patrolling this position. You know they're limited on grenades. Might not necessarily have the AWP. In this case, Kenny does. What's the play? Lots of utility to work for for G2. Kenny in position, very default. Standard positioning. CT spawn for Apex, play swing, watch drop. Kenny, hit the shots. Happy hold long for retake. And to protect Kenny. It's quite simple, quite straightforward. We've all seen it. I think even Silvers are doing it these days, Henry. Even you. I don't do it. No, you haven't learned I that one yet. I still rush cat with an auto sniper. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Shocks and body. Now, this is interesting because the left side smoke allows them to potentially wrap into CT. The problem yes. is they don't have utility on the A side. So if they do it, it's going to be a brawl against Apex. And Kenny will swing on that. He's in position on the corner. So I can't, yeah, I can't imagine them going that direction without any preparation or at least Smiths to jump in on cat to take Kenny. And it's worked out in favor of MBK. They try and get in the door. MBK's going to capitalize that position but goes down. Sixer, good rotation and reaction. And it gives the advantage to Envy. Yeah, it is a cool little setup there with the smokes, but managing to fight back with MBS, no all for this time for Smith, so it's going to be G2 
Actually dropping the round this time. It was an interesting approach here. I like those smokes. The reason they do one towards CD Spawn and the corner as well is means you're protected from the actual B doors themselves. Obviously, you can get out towards CD Spawn, that's going to be covered, but it means when you go around that initial corner, the AWP is going to have a tough time actually pre aiming that corner. He's not sure when you're going to be facing what particular angle and height. So it's a cool little idea. And like you said, it does definitely give you the option to go towards CD Spawn as well. Even with the smoke down, you flash through and try and get it surprise. And that can be quite an interesting play. It's not so common, but I'd like to see it used more. It's actually a really cool tactic to watch um, unfold. Shocks, AK this time does get into long. He's not quite fast enough to beat them. Oh, that's clever. This is quite good. This is cool. Yeah, so goes through the flames, knows likely what it means, has position. Happy had no idea he's there. And now he smokes off. He can go back across. Should he please? I think there might be a slight gap, but all the activities meanwhile over on B. So pick the fact that he's got long. Lovely spray through. It's actually one for each. Crossfire positions. The sixer from back of the site will hit down on RPK, but never mind the cleverness. The rest of his team clumsy in comparison. I think if they waited a, a little bit longer before they went into B and forced a rotation, didn't even get the chance to fall back at that point. Shox finds a kill, he's staying alive and his teammates just strike towards the B site. If he waited like maybe 10 seconds, even five seconds, just to allow him to kind of second guess himself, see what Shox could do, could he find the second kill there, keep playing with the AWP, that would have been great. But before they've even had a chance to pull back, they're rushing in towards the B, and it's a very tight choke point. As soon as they get a spray down there, they're famous. They're going to mow you down, and MVS do capitalize. It's 11-9, keeping four players alive as well. G2 are taking the early lead here. Going to be dropping off, and here's the replay from six. And you can see what I mean. There's two, two players. They're just about to rotate, but he finds that first entry kill. They're running for a smoke as well, which is interesting. You've got time to work with it. Shoxy's still alive, and there it is. G2, after a, a great start, they managed to running to be and drop around the hands of six of that. But here we go then. Oh, G2, double up set up on the T side. This certainly is interesting. We'll see what they can deliver here. Shoxi and Smith, that tag team combo on the T side. No double up for MBS just yet. Just Kenny S, of course. As Shoxi has a decent spawn towards B. Smokes out for now. And that's pretty much going to suggest he has to move. Always got a lineup. What's this, this going to be? It, mm, so normally you go back to the wall, aim into the box, crosshair placement, line up the headshot toward back box at B. Not sure Maybe what that he's is. Holding for the flashbang. Yeah, I think you're it, it looked like one right. of those ones you're like lining up for the platform potentially. No, yeah. definitely not. Okay. So there is a way to do that where he's standing now. If you look into, I think it's, I, I haven't done it in a while. It's just above the railing or the, the mid crossbar on the inner box. The box you just saw with that little black bar. But yeah, no, he's just pre scoped so that they don't hear him in the corner if they push through. Yeah. Thought it would be one of those. Lovely. You can do it towards long. You smoke the long doors as T side. You can line it up and then pre-fire the corner with like a lining up with a little symbol on the wall. Those spots are quite clever. And these guys all know them. They all play enough. Come on. It's their job to know them, but they can be such an advantage. If you ever want an advantage in matchmaking on someone well, who plays a specific angle, learn that spot. Good shot. Good reaction from Shox. We'll take down Sixer, but he had a lovely one with the AK as well to find the opening. It's MBK now alone in the site, though. That's the problem on B. Because alone in the site, he's got to get a rotation smartly. Apex fits to the door fast. Kenny's got to get gun back out because nearly caught the nade. a massive problem. Actually, funnels them to Happy, who's pushed out in long. So lots of opportunities, but missed opportunities as Smith gets back into Happy. Yeah, they will be rotating and leaving B at this point. Kenny has dropped just poor old Apex now in a three versus one. Had to be quite a simple approach here from GT. Didn't have any nades to work with now. Apex has a chance to get a frag, but Shox is there to back him up. It's going to be Smith surviving on three HP. But there it is, a big round for G2. And as like I said, double orb set up, not really many nades to work with, smoke out of the start. And it's going to be six out with a great shot at the AK-47, but you are exposed in that position. If the teammates are there to get the refrag, it's actually quite easy to take him down at that point. And they struck. As soon as they get that kill in return, they're like, get in towards B now. Scream hits another kill. And they didn't really have smokes to cross over, but at least they're challenging. And the orb starting to land shots at that point. So an eco now for Envious. It will be Apex, who purchases a little bit more than his teammates into this one. Buys an M4A4 and no nades and some body armor. Two players towards B. And Shocks, he, he seems like he wants to fight oh. back to this area. And he nails it. MBK so slow to move back once he gets to that position. It's a hard shot to hit either way. But nails it, Shocks. And in they go. No rotation just yet. Kenny's trying to get closer to the doorway just to Eagle for him to work with. And Sixer already tagged up. He's only gone to 66. It wasn't a headshot. That certainly is. Kenny finds two under the Eagle back inside of the site and bomb down as well. There's still down a man in this, but he's pushed forward to grab an AK. And information from Sixer. As he swaps to a Deagle, he's going to get the open. Shocks misses the shot, thankfully, because he's trying to bait his teammate in. Gets the Deagle, or rather the AK in position on it to gamble. Thankfully, it's not down to a one versus two, and it works out to... I think this is a dead-even situation, and Sixer gets an AK from it. 
There we go then. One minute remaining. The bomb down in the sight as well. Shocks here, the AWP. Plenty of time to work with here. Both players in the same position. It's a nice little spot there from the CT by the tunnel. Going to be holding up. That's actually Kenny S. He's got the AK in hand. And that's the shot that's important. Six can't manage just yet. But does some damage up to Kenny S. Go for the spray down. Shocks gets the reply kill in return there. And it's going to be him with 11. the AWP. 11 11, Henry. It's happening again. Every time. Well, it trades off. This second half has been very back and forth, as it not? It looks like we do have a buy coming in from the CTs. They managed to bring out the AP, AWP once more, of course, but uh, some UMPs, M4s here, one kit. Money's certainly limited, and we do have to buy for G2. In return, MAC-10, three AKs, and the Shoxi AWP. Shocks to the corner. That time, no flash. That's why you don't flash. Apex commits to the jump. He didn't even have the best spawn for it. He was one or two back from where you'd ideally want to be, but he beats them there, hits the shot. Down they go. A pretty substantial kill, all things considered, the economy in this round. Whoever wins sends the other back to basics. Indeed. Well, there's a reply kill. Body actually goes through the mid doors at that point, not getting that man advantage. And there's no reply frag. You'd hope for a little bit more of that one flash over potentially just to make sure you push that CT off. Then you can get through the mid doors, but Smiths, he'll take the AWP for now. It's just shocks you're using it with that decent spawn. Be a four and four, and certainly the terrorist advantage. You can see there's a UMP up and no nades at all with the CT at this point. So they come down to raw fragging and towards B they go once again. G2 love to walk into the site, they're very capable of their star players hitting these shots. For six, they had a good position with that UMP. Can he do anything with this? Gets one kill, looking for the second, but can't pick it up. So the RPK to go down and finds the double kill. That's a good shot. The second one to spin 180 after resetting his aim once before. Your hand's already out of place on your mouse pad. Low sensitivity of the long swing still makes it work, and Scream will close it. I always struggle with that. If I'm preset, if I have my hand in the right place, I can swing one to two, but he swung, swung twice and still hit the shots. Nice work from him. It's going to be G2 taking the lead now. I think at this point, there's a bit of a stretch in the previous round for Envious. They're going to have to take an eco here. And Kenny S, he can't believe his luck. He's an emotional player, isn't he? He is. And Smith's decent spawn once again. I uh, will just reiterate one more time. If you get the long spawns, you're going to take them as the orb every single opportunity you get. No flashes this time, but no commitment from the CTs at all. There's a player towards a car, and it looks like two players on the A site as well. So it will be an A sort of commitment here. Get the long control, maybe force some players back towards short. At this point, though, and you know they're going to be pretty much fully code. Just stick together, send the Mac 10s in first. Easy kill here towards car. Happy in the wrong first. And Body, he'll go charging up towards the site. Body nearly overlooked Happy's position, but now he's made a little bit of bank. Two kills on a Mac 10. Kenny. He's at 75. Manages to get one in return. If you wanted to get someone to get a kill, it would be Kenny, because that'll give him position to get the AWP on that pistol kill. But it'll be Glass Cannon. I'd sooner see him buy a rifle, six or by the op. Toss him either way and get, get armor onto each. Uh, he's bought it himself. Interesting. Oh, then a big round coming in, of course. It's around number 25, 13, 11 for G2. Had a decent second half here. And they're keeping the MAC-10 interesting enough. That's just suggesting maybe a little bit faster. Okay, Shoxi does upgrade. I think that's the right call. Screw the money at this point. Let's win the game. That's, uh, he's still got 5k after that. Right? So that's absolutely fine. And it's going to be the suicide raid down towards short. No actual presence from the CTs apart from MBK. He's waiting for the crossover. Body seems aware. Actually, going to be challenging this. Moving from MBK. Good awareness to fall back in time. And some damage exchanged by both players keeping their life for now. Tries to spray back a little bit late and catch him off. We didn't mention it, but keep it in mind, G2, one of the issues they had throughout the course of, you know, Sector 3, third quarter of the year in 2016 was the CT side on this map. So the fact they get six is actually quite good. Speaking about G2, so now they're just converting standard rounds. They're very good on the T side of this map, there's no question. And already they've got some control of Catwalk to work with. Bounce smokes down. They often throw the isolation smoke onto Kenny as well, who just checks toward long smoke out. So Happy doesn't have a full read. As all that's going on, though, give up Catwalk, that single smoke, and Kenny's rotated. They're going to go out to mid, and there's not really much here. But then one player, that player being NBK, and that player gone. Good drop-down strategy off Cat. A single smoke masks them off. Apex lines them up, though. Bigger problems because Sixers down below. They have helped oh. us off. Two men in the site, and everyone just walks into a crossfire. Had no chance. Kenny just waits it out, and Shox is there. That's that's so huge from the two players in B. That was so perfect as well from G2. The fact that Shoxy gets in towards CT spawn, he gets the first kill as well. He's got, okay, this position completely clear. You can't get killed from here. Kill the players in the bomb side. Normally, one of you frank, all the flashes over, eradicating that crossfire here, but they thought they had such a strong chance taking that round, getting shut down here. Apex does such a good job as well. The thing is, where are the flashbangs? RPK's got them. You want to be flashing over, surely, as you go in. I think he's RPK towards the tunnel areas. He couldn't really back them up in that respect, but. Bless you. I was sneezing. I couldn't finish the point, but 
it was a uh, very good <laughs> it was a very good um crossfire coming in it just looked a little bit too easy you want to be more overwhelmed than that when you are having players coming from the tunnels and towards middle as well but anyway double orb setup now for envious they pull one back it's 13 12. and smith's back on the awp no decent spawn for them this time it will be a default play kenny is patrolling towards long he does have a player with him is happy towards the pits Shocks are back away from the door as well. Smoke out on Xbox, lets them get onto Cat. Interestingly enough, we haven't seen G2 go this direction quite as much as Shocks already on the corner. Apex is down below, don't let Minimap fool you. You guys can't quite see direction on that. A little T above his head indicates so. Well, the number nine that you're looking at. Kenny's in position though. That's the bigger one in this because they haven't been able to push him back. Scream's still trying to keep happy contained. And interestingly, it looks like they don't want to commit to this this time either. It looks like Long's more the approach for them. 49 seconds. We haven't talked about time at all in these rounds because they've been quite quick and quite concisive in terms of where they're going. But now they're going to head over toward A. They are indeed. There's one player waiting for them who's happy. He's in a great position to find one, maybe two kills. A blue bin can be very powerful. This can still work because happy. You said blue bin's powerful. They read it. That's going to pull Kenny away. Shocks is going to go with the exact second. Second apex is rotating. They don't even need him there. Scream. It's the shot down long. Shocks was actually in a perfect lurk position. It's a different approach to the split. It doesn't even matter. They're onto the A site. Bomb's going to be planted. Wow. Okay. That is why I love Dust too because you don't necessarily need the deepest strategies to win. It can showcase your star players and the potential they have to hit. Some ludicrous shots there. It's body opening things up. The pre fire towards the blue bin as well. And he comes down and batters the Orpa. Great job from Scream as well on the reply as soon as he went down. And that's why I like this map. It's so vanilla sometimes. Just going together and sticking as a unit and hitting nice shots to counter strike. And that's a big kill as well to get MBK down on that AWP because mandatory save coming in. Only going to get $1,900. They might get to force out some pistols from Sixer. I think he's already throwing them. That was nuts from Body. Very well played. Yeah, that's so big. So all of this right now, shot from Smith's at the end. All of that, I should say, I guess speaking in retrospect, is just simply to cause rotations away from Kenny. They wanted to pull him down long, win that position, and then Shocks was thinking, thank you very much. Ops gone, Cat becomes a viable opportunity. Didn't even need to get that far. Well, and this, unsurprisingly, is, as it says on screen, tactical envy. Oh, that money's not in a fantastic position. Round number 27, they've got, what is it, maybe $2,500 average, maybe a little bit more than that. One round away from map point. We have to say that both of these teams lost yesterday. It's crazy to think G2 and Envy is going into this one. You think they're almost dead set to make that top eight. That was like a lock-in maybe a few months ago, but uh, G2 and Envious now, one of these teams will go in 0-2, and at this point, it's looking very likely to be Envious. He will have to take an eco this stage. The PD 50s and a CZ, a flashbang here or there. Three players towards B, and it looks like the T's didn't actually spot that, so Scream will be committing. Not necessarily a huge deal right now. He will be falling back. Good tag on the fallback. No, he does actually sense something. There's a foot in that sort of position. So he calls his teammates, let's leave B for now, shall we? We'll run back and go long A. We've got Shoxi, who's actually taking control of that already. He's cleared it out completely. We can get an orb in the pit, cover us up, and we go out towards the long with the AK-47s. Shox, with that AWP as well, is going to get himself posted on the platform at A long. Good position to be in, can spot all the way into the site. They'll hug the left wall. I'm surprised to see Smith is out, out as far as he is, but obviously they want to get Molotovs on the platform and move Kenny down. But they can hug the wall with him in that position. Sneak up, smoke off. Kenny waiting to see if they'll push through. Right now, they haven't done so, and he's not going to be able to back in. Now tries to his apex, but Scream already at cars, posted, waiting, and actually can hold that with relative ease. No point for an elevator boost. We're not going to try and see the pistols do so. Catch off the planter but well executed and well established from G2. Double op in this against the pistols as well, so good thing they didn't walk into that B position. They could have had huge problems. Indeed. Well then, MBK, last player remaining. Pretty simple procedure for G2. Opted to go towards B at the start of the round. Obviously a little three-man stack there from MBS. They did ascertain that what's going on. Fall back all the way through T-spawn. Actually very calculated. They had long control in favor of Shoxi once again. I think he had that long spawn. Worked out no one was there. They came up, planted for long. Clean round. As I say clean, the MBK does find a kill, but he can't pick up the weapons. He's got 23 HP. He's uh, pretty sure someone will be waiting for that point. I would have actually stuck around towards that area and tried to get the, the gun back potentially, but hoping to see whether he can see a rotation kill available. Not going to be the case. 15-12, and it will be map point for G2 at this point, and the money's still not a fantastic position for Envious. Will they go for an aggressive round here? Will they go for the big plays? They've got no AWP available, four M4s, a famous Rapex as well, one kit. In terms of utilities, five smokes available, but no incendiaries and just a few flashbangs. At this point, you maybe want to 
push towards B-Tunnels, maybe try and get that first frag. You know they've been working that area with the AWP, trying to find an initial kill. You are sending two players over there. Let's see whether Shock's gonna open things up once again. A headshot as well, takes down Happy. Great work from him. Caught Apex in the same shot, catches Happy this time. No flashes once more. That's more like it when you have that spawn. RPK is gonna get into lower. He's the one with the bomb. Main advantage to work with. This is huge. They're going to try and make up for that deficit at long and get Kenny in position. Exactly. Well, they have to make up for it now. And G2 are going to be aware that they've got the it, huge advantage in terms of the money, the, the economy, the utility. Everything's going in their favor. And they have that man advantage as well. It's round number 28. It's match point. Going in towards B once again. G2 love this side of the map so much. Problem is six of them in an interesting position on the left towards that fence. He's going to be trying baited in by MBK. If MBK can do a good enough job, unfortunately, though, the Molotov drops in. It's out after him to actually jump out and face, but Body takes him down. MBK can do anything about this. He can't. That could be the GG now. Five on two. Say we're definitely there as Barney puts Apex in the grave as well. And Envy. Win the major in Cluj. Over a year ago, I know. It seems like ages. Crash out in groups in the immediate one after. Crash out in groups. Following that in Cologne. And now they're going to go 0-2 in a qualifier, maybe not even make it through to groups. They've got a big task ahead of them if they want to do so. Kenny will do whatever he can to oh disallow God, that shot through the door on the screen after taking RPK. Brings this back to a 1 versus 2 smoke out. He's going to push straight through because it's oh. Kenny. But Shox has had enough of that. 16-12, G2. Get back into the winner's circle. Could have been a little bit closer than last round. Kenny has looked like he fancied it. He got three kills in the five on one, but it wasn't meant to be this time. G2. Do manage to bounce back and his NBA is going 0-2. and